Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration how to find coolant leaks on your vehicle. New videos are being released every week. Keep up to date with my latest video by hitting that notification bell on my channel homepage. Coolant leaks can certainly be risky on your vehicle as they can reduce the system's pressure, drop the coolant's level, and increase the chance of introducing air into the system. If left for longer periods of time, the leak may worsen and if caught off guard can overheat your engine. Cooling systems are designed to keep a specific pressure, so when that decreases, that also increases the coolant's boiling point. For every 1 psi increase, this will increase the system's boiling point by 2 to 3 degrees Fahrenheit. For this I am using a coolant system pressure testing kit. This kit comes with a pump, adapter and various sized rubber fittings that is made by OEM Tools. As you can see, there is three different size rubber fittings which fits into the vehicle's either radiator or reservoir. For this, I already know what size is required and this will be based on which adapter fits into the radiator or reservoir hole when the cap is removed. The link to this specific tool will be included in the description below. This test must be done when the engine is cold so you do not risk burning yourself. Safety glasses are also recommended too. First locate the cap. For this vehicle, which is a 1997 BMW 540i, it has a pressurized expansion tank, therefore the test will be done here. Some vehicles share a similar system such as Volvo and Volkswagen, and other vehicles may have a non-pressurized expansion tank, so the test will need to be done either at the radiator cap, or a cap within close proximity of the radiator. Top up the coolant if need be, as we don't want to risk any air entering the system, and liquid also has a lower compression rate than compared to air. So if there is more air in the system, this will take much longer to pump up the pressure. Use coolant which is specified for your vehicle and only use distilled water. For this 1998 Ford Ranger, here is a non-pressurized expansion tank, so the test will need to be done at the radiator. Right on the top of the cap is a specified pressure rating which is 16 psi. Removing the cap just to give you a peek. The insert simply screws onto the adapter. The threaded portion will need to be furthest away from the adapter mounting face. Then tighten it up and it will expand. You'll need to tighten it first somewhat so it does fit snug into the hole, then insert it and continue to tighten. Clip on the pump. For this I am removing the engine cover so I can easily see any coolant leaks at the rear of the engine. The pressure testing kit shown in the video is from Mobile Distributor Supply. A link to this product as mentioned before will be included in the description below. All around this is an excellent kit which provides generic fittings to work on a variety of vehicles. I'll provide a better in-depth review video in the future. In order to determine what pressure to pump up the system, as mentioned before, it should be listed on the cap. For this vehicle it states 200 kPa or also known as 2 bar or 29 psi. Pump up the system until it reads that specific value on the gauge. If there is a leak you may not be able to achieve that maximum value or if you do, the gauge will slowly drop. For this I can see the gauge slowly dropping and I can hear a water leak. Just taking a quick peek around the engine bay I can see the leak at the connection where the water valves are located which is used for the climate control. In this case it was just a quick adjustment of a clamp to ensure it was seated and tightened correctly. Once done recheck the system and ensure there is no leaks. Leaks could range from a variety of areas such as a hose with a loose clamp, faulty hose, water pump, radiator, heater core, head gasket, valley pan, heated upper intake, or heated throttle body. Coolant does have somewhat of an oily film so it can be easily spotted when looking for the residue. Beyond looking visually, you can also use the assistance of a dye with an ultraviolet light such as this one. Also made by OEM Tools, link for this product will be included in the description below as well. A dye can be purchased from your local auto parts supplier, dumped into the coolant system, allow the engine to run for a short period of time, and then scan for any leaks. The area will be illuminated by a fluorescent stain. New videos are being uploaded every week to my channel, so subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the button below the video. This concludes the rest of my video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments, please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.